turbo exhaust back pressure is bad on a turbo car, any of it. As much as some people who haven't got a clue make out cars need back pressure and all that, no cars do and turbo cars really don't. The best exhaust for a turbo car is none at all. This car's got like a three inch cobbled together homemade turbo back side exit and you know it's not bad it's it's perfectly acceptable for the um, level of power this car's got originally it had this on it which is a side pipe which yeah it's home squashed but it's you know goes wider there it's not a I won't call that a restriction it just looks a bit shit and you can't see that under the car anyway and it looks pretty badass with that tailpipe perfectly all right but just because I well because I wanted to as I've explained in previous video I fitted this race cap I had kicking around it's a metal high flow 100 south race cap to the tailpipe just because of flames and because I wanted to see what it was like unfortunately as you can probably tell it's not that big like it's, it's a three inch in and out but I think the overall diameter is only four it's relatively small so you know high flow one or not it's not necessarily good for um, maximum flow so I thought to myself hang on I've got the kit to measure back pressure it's, it's meant for measuring um, like catalytic converter blockages so it's only a rubber pipe, so it can't exactly handle the heat, and I'm sure the gauge can't either. But it's enough to, uh, but only you know, run it for a few minutes. minutes. I can't try it driving because it just melt it before you use it. You know, got to actually test it. And obviously, in you know, in neutral, there's no load compared to normal, so it's almost no gas flow in comparison. This is the Sealy back pressure gauge. It's um, meant for checking if your cat is blocked. Hence that look. And. Uh, Obviously, because I've got a cat here, but it's not a very big one, and it's also had a proper beating. I've been worried about it being a bit of a restriction. So, um, although I can't do it under load, should we have a look at their um, what it's saying when I give it some reps? <laughs> obviously not under any load not in gear just revving it let's see what a bit of boost and stuff does I'll have to bounce off the limiter I think good or not I think it's probably bad if it can um, create back pressure like that just off the rev limiter like 5 psi you know it's not moving I'm thinking that's probably restrictive I'm thinking I should maybe remove the fucking thing two very boring minutes later that took all of two minutes to uh, find a substitute three inch cat less exhaust with a lambda sensor bell that is actually completely uncut the turbo back exhaust from my mate's old Renault 5 GT turbo it was a bonnet exit 3 inch v-band off the turbo and that just went straight out and he, he gave it me ages ago because he obviously don't need it anymore because he sold the car and um, it's like everything does come in handy for this so I'm going to put the uh, back pressure thing in that. It's only literally this barb. And it goes to the gauge via a rubber pipe. You know, not exactly heat proof, so I can't drive it like this. Um, yeah, and we'll do this, I'll do the same test as I did last time. And, well, let's see if the pressure is lower or noticeably lower or none, which is also likely. Um, I gotta fuck the cat off, haven't I? I'm just gonna have to run it straight pipe like it used to be. So let's see. Right, this is uh, test two with just a three inch straight pipe. That was 
pretty much to the limiter and the gauge didn't really wobble. There's your answer. The cat has to go. <laughs> Fuck it. I know now. I had a feeling it might be the case, but that's really the case. I like the sound and the, the flames, but fuck it, back to a straight pipe. What I did originally with this, because I, again, originally I didn't know if it'd work well, I cut it at some welds. So this is original, and I cut it there, and then quickly welded it back up. There's the original weld. So I'm hoping at least I can literally cut that off and it'll be the right length to uh, whack it back on. So I'm going to try that now. And um, also I want to weld a lambda bung on that just in case because I won't mind trying that again. So um, yeah, time to make an exhaust. A few moments later. A couple of minutes of cutting and uh, tape temporarily and that is going to be the new tailpipe section pretty much fucking 50% of the exhaust to be honest well 35% because you've got the downpipe downpipe back this is 50% I would say downpipe's about this long then there's a silencer then there's this bit but yeah this is now 3 inch straight through I'm going to offer it up now make sure it's um basically correct <laughs> and then I'll uh, weld it up oh and it's got a lambda sensor bung in it just in case always handy and then um, good times that's the tailpipe of the car now now it's finished and to be fair I much prefer that looks pretty badass I think Yeah, I really like that. As much as I miss the um, the flames from the cat, I'm sure the flames from just being all the other shit I've done to it will more than make up for it. I do prefer this look, but I did like the glowing exhaust and the flames of the cat one. But, you know, performance first, flames second, and that race cat just weren't big enough. I mean, um, Rallycross cars and World Rally cars that run similar setups, their cats are way bigger, so they flow more. That one was only like four inch diameter. I've seen these uh, Rallycross ones, and while the inlet and outlet is only three inches, four inches, whatever, the actual fucking diameter of the unit looks twice that, at least. So, you know. Um, it's what it looks like underneath, just literally straight pipe nothing special um, I added uh, an exhaust mount it's hard but it's got a little bit of give without that it, when I bought the car it didn't have um, a mount there it's just loose and it did wobble and rattle a bit but that kind of stops that so yeah this is what I mean about um, testing rather than just fucking presuming and guessing like most people do I tested that uh, race cat to see if it was restrictable or not and fuck yeah it was so it's gone but you can't just presume it's not or presume things are or presume whatever if you can test it somehow, I don't have to be the best test in the world but something that gives you a good indication fucking do it and um, I've done it and it should be a lot better obviously uh, we'll see when I get to drive it but 5 psi even just you know bouncing off the limiter in neutral that's a lot of pressure a lot of back pressure so I'm hoping there's a significant performance difference so we will see soon after this is something I didn't actually plan to do so I have not got like a work in progress of this but I have totally redesigned which is all these pipes the oil breather system on this Volvo Red Block engine. I will show you a couple of uh, 
pictures that I took while I was doing it, but I'll explain what's going on. As standard, they've got a pipe coming from like a PCV setup like most cars have, well all cars have by law, where the oil breather goes to the turbo intake. Actually, it goes to the turbo intake and on these also to the inlet manifold, I think. I think it goes to both, I don't know. But either way, it's shit like that. I bought this car with nothing to the intake and the one to the intake manifold itself blocked off. And then basically one line from, there's an oil separator under the inlet manifold. And one line from there, the breather line, just go in to the floor, basically. And yeah, it's, it worked, but there was literally, on these engine designs, there's nothing from the head, no oil, no oil breathing from the head at all. You know, not from the cam cover, not from the back of the head, nothing. And on most cars, there's, you know, two. Um, and the actual oil separator box thing is, it's a good design, but it could be better. So... I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna make it better. So basically, the oil separator box is is much better than just having a plain old catch tank. Most people just put a catch tank there, so all the oil from the breather system, oil, oil and fumes, goes into the catch tank, job done. Which is good, but obviously if the catch tank ever fills up, that's a bit shit. A proper oil separator setup like what I've done now and what this car comes as standard, just a bit of a crap version. Um, Basically, the fumes and everything, which includes some of the oil, goes to the oil separator. And then the fumes can be evacuated. On this one, they go into Atmo. As standard, they'd go back to either the inlet manifold or pre-turbo. Um, and yeah, and the oil itself, you know, go, drains back to the crankcase. It's nowhere near as easy to do as a catch tank, but um, it's the best way, really. The problem was, like I said, on this, while it's got that, it didn't have any kind of breathing from the head. It, all it had was one breather from the block, you know, the crankcase, and then one sort of outlet back plus the outlet to the air. So I had a look at it and thought, well, the outlet to the air is not very big and there's nothing from the head. So I've modified the oil cap itself to become the head breather. I'll show you here quickly. Just undo the oil cap and I'll show you, you'll see what I've done. Basically, drilled four holes, quite big holes, and then a, a 5 8 hole in the top. So then all the, uh, you know, oil breathing pressure from the head in the head now can escape out of there. And it goes to the um, oil separator box, which is under the inlet manifold. Um, I'll show you the picture that I've, you know, I took when I built it. But basically, I've added an extra port on the side of the breather box. And it was on a funny flat circle, which says to me Volvo planned to have an extra outlet like that as standard. But never used it. I don't know why. So I basically drilled... And added a extra port on the side again all five eights so that was good so then add that to the breather box at last the two standard ones from the crankcase which is kind of a crankcase pressure and a, a oil return because they've got there's like a baffle inside to stop the oil just pissing out the breather bit and all that it's kind of separated inside but the other thing i was thinking well from looking at it is the oil breather box itself, separator box, the breather outlet, it was fairly big, it was like 5 eighths, which is bigger than a lot of cars, but it could really be bigger, because I think these do breathe quite a lot anyway, and if you've got one, well you've got two different 5 eighths, one from the cam cover, and one from the actual crankcase itself, in my opinion the actual breather to Atmo needed to be bigger, so I basically enlarged it again. I made it a pretty much twice as big. It is now this hose. It's about 25 mil, 30 mil idea. I can't remember, I didn't actually measure it. But it's big and the top. So now, and that goes down there and around there and it just vents the, you know, the gases to Atmo, but no oil. Oil itself 
stays in the separator and goes back into the sump. So it should work far better than standard, mostly because of this, but also because I've enlarged the actual breather. Because, you know, if the breather's restrictive, the whole system's restrictive because that is literally the only way out. So, um, yeah, this should work well. And with no actual catch tank, as in a separate one, it goes nowhere. It's kind of better in my book because A, it doesn't ever fill up, which it rarely does unless your car's pretty knackered. But as I found out in the past, if your car does fucking blow up, which tends to fill the catch tank, if you've got a catch tank in the engine bay, it will fill up in fucking seconds when an engine blows up. And then it will just spray all over your engine bay, all over the floor. It's a bit of a fire hazard and it just makes a fucking mess. But if you've got it like this, all it can ever do, and it probably won't, is travel all around this crazy looping of pipes and out the actual breather and to the floor, which is what the catch tank would do anyway as it overflows. So, um, you know, this is the best way. So it's cost me precisely zero. I had the plastic fittings, I drilled the holes, I did all this, I, I had all these hoses anyway. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, it doesn't look that pretty, although it looks not bad, but functionality wise, wise it's bloody good. All I've had to do was um, slightly rotate the dipstick, but nothing much. And uh, yeah, happy days, a proper you know, more like a fucking race car breather system. Just seems madness throwing away the actual proper oil separator setup. They've got a standard when you can just improve it and make for something that's way better than any catch tank in my books. 72 hours later. Quick update on the breather system that I made up, which you saw earlier in the video. This video is taken whoa, a good few days later. I can't remember, but I've probably done a good hundred miles in this car and it's working great there's no no leaks no nothing and when while there was all the time i've owned this car a slight leak from around the sort of front of the head and cam cover and whatever that seems to have pretty much stopped so i'd say there was pressure in the head you know which is the whole reason i did this and now it's a lot less if not zero because the oily shit, which seemed to appear when driving it hard, is gone. So, that's that.